All right, we are back. We this is part two of the Dynasty Trade Show. I hope you watched the the first part of the weekly episode, and that brought you either to jump in the Dynasty Theory Patreon, five bucks a month, free seven day trial, early access to the Pivot Point, the Dynasty tiers, all that good stuff. But then we release the episode of the Pivot Point. We're starting to do this on a weekly basis about one or two days later. So if you're watching this live, you saw Kyla Murray on the thumbnail. With the June 18th date. No, we are not coming at you from the future. That's just one we're going to release it on the YouTube channel. Like we talked about with the last episode, we would greatly appreciate if you like and subscribe. Uh, it, it does help us out and we appreciate it. All right, Mitch, we're not wasting any time here. We got through about 12 trades, including that absolutely crazy trade with 25 assets. Now I want to spend some time. These are patron trades that were shared with us in the Dynasty Theory Discord. The next six are trades where somebody was really looking to package up and get that elite asset. And it really ties in nicely to last week's episode where we talked about depth or high-end assets. So first up, 12-team Superflex, start 11, tiered PPR, and .25 PPC, point per carry. David Montgomery, Brandon Ayuk, and a 25 first for Justin Jefferson. I was going to say for anyone who doesn't play in point per carry leagues, it what it does with running backs like David Montgomery, it props them up so much. So in a normal PPR league with no PPC, I would be on Justin Jefferson without a shadow of a doubt. With a 0.25 PPC, which is a very heavy point per carry, I mean, because you look at it, he gets 10 carries, gets two and a half points. I that that's a huge factor. So for me, I'm Montgomery. I can I hope that's a mid 25 first because the one thing is when someone trades for Justin Jefferson doesn't mean that their team is a contender, really. It could just mean, hey, they want Justin Jefferson on their team. So maybe it's more of the 108 kind of first. And then all of a sudden it's like, all right, I could buy into this. So I'm going to go with the package over Justin Jefferson. I prefer Jefferson still. I know in the typical context, we talk about start 10, PPR, no point per carry. Yes, you're getting the 0.25 PPC from Montgomery. And I think that outweighs the drop from one to 0.5 PPR for Montgomery. Mm -hmm. But you're still getting that, that running back added here. If that 25 first is on the later side, it really is Jefferson, but you talk about 107, 108 in 2025. Yeah. You, we know Brandon Ayuk is a very good receiver. We know Justin Jefferson is a great receiver. And that is not a knock on Brandon Ayuk at all. Like, like, oh you no, you're not, you're not the best in the world. You're the eighth best wide receiver <laughs> in the world. You dare suck. you not be Justin Jefferson? So for me, I take Jefferson. But this is super close for me because of two aspects, the start 11 and the 0.25 PPC. So uh, again, though, we're talking about what it costs to get up to a player like Justin Jefferson. You got to be willing to pay up. And I know, you know, Mitch, a lot of people are going to be listening to this thinking I would never move Justin Jefferson for that. Yeah. Oh, I get it. I completely understand it. This next one I thought was a little bit more interesting. 12-team, one quarterback league. So Blech. keep that in mind for the future picks. Jalen Waddell, 25 first, and a 25 second for Puka Nakua and a pair of fourths. It's the one quarterback. So that 25 first, if that leans late, I mean, and it easily could, it's heavily Puka for me. I know we only saw it for one year, and we know what Matthew Stafford does with wide receivers, so maybe he can't keep it up after Matthew Stafford decides to retire. If you have two more years of Matthew Stafford with Puka, I, I Puka just, he could give you 30-point weeks every single week. Waddle can do that, but he's injured the, a lot of the times, and you can't trust him in your lineup. I mean... It's a sad case, but that's where we are with him. And hopefully he goes out and has a very healthy 2024 season and we don't have to worry about that anymore. But right now you do. And if this was super flex, I could probably lean towards the Waddle and 25 first side. 
But since it's not, since it's one's quarterback, it's pretty heavily Puka for me. Yeah, it's it's funny when you talk about one quarterback leagues, especially one quarterback with no tight end premium, you look at picks like a late 25 first and the value is still like early 25 first when you remove quarterbacks, th- there's a big dip. Yeah. And it kind of it's it shrinks a little bit, but what it does, it not just makes the late 25 first a little less valuable in a in a super flex league. You're like, okay, if that's a mid 25 first, I'm really excited about it. It really makes a, a tear break along the way. So you get a mid 25 first and a one quarterback with no tight end premium, you're not overly excited. And it's like once you get to late second value it kind of teeters off because then you have the quarterback still going so the value kind of catches up and then like thirds and fourths they're pretty much the same value across the board but you look at one quarterback leagues and it's a really interesting dynamic picks just lose so much value on the trade market they do and i obviously we just talked about them being a little less valuable but i think people push it a little too far so if you get the waddle side you get the picks with the insulated value if it's a later first there's going to be minimal market probably as time goes on and you're well that pick's going to gain value it really might not so if that's a later first it's like waddle in two seconds for puka i i want puka Mm. i think what he did last year he was just too good for it to be a fluke. Like, it's not like he was, Oh, he cracked wide receiver 24 and like he was good, but there was nobody else. Everything like he was a great receiver last year for fantasy purposes. So for me, this is Puka. If I'm not contending, I still want a little bit more, honestly. Yeah. You know, I, I let's get rid of that 25 second and throw in a player that is going to give me a little bit more value than that 25 second might. So two trades in here from the, the packaging up idea, Mitch, you wanted the package in the first one. I wanted Jefferson. We're both on the, the potentially elite wide receiver in Puka Nakua here. And I agree with you. I would change if this was super flex. 12 team super flex 0.2 for rushing and receiving first downs 0.75 tight end premium start 11 Zay flowers, Jordan Addison and a 25 first for Christian McCaffrey and a 25 fourth. I think this is a great move to get out of McCaffrey. Who's a 28 year old running back. You, you get Zay flowers who hopefully it's not Zay Jones. We're going to assume that Zay flowers, right? Right. Uh, it's it's flowers. Yeah, I know. I know. And then Addison, we've talked about him before. He's not a number one, but he's a good complimentary guy. But you're getting that 25 first added in. But I want to talk about Christian McCaffrey for a second. He is 28. So Ezekiel Elliott is also 28. He's just almost 29 to where Christian McCaffrey just turned 28, right? Ezekiel Elliott has 700 more rush attempts than Christian McCaffrey has. And you're like, well... McCaffrey gets all that receiving work. He has like a hundred more catches than Ezekiel Elliott does at this point in his career. I mean, yes, Christian McCaffrey's 28, but, and yes, he has a lot of work over the previous few seasons, right? But Ezekiel Elliott has so much more wear on the tires than what Christian McCaffrey has. And it's, it's just weird. Just looking at the two, I'm like, oh, you know, Zeke Elliott's 28 and he can hardly play anymore, but we still have this high value in Chris McCaffrey. Chris McCaffrey is pretty much like a 26 year old Ezekiel Elliott at this point. Cause I mean, it's 700 carries in the NFL more, which to me is just a bonkers amount, especially when you look at Zeke probably got a hundred carries this past year. So that's how much work he was getting early in his career. It, for me, it's still the package in this, but I, not quite worried about Christian McCaffrey, you know, at the end of this year, all of a sudden his value plummets. I think we're probably two to three years off that point. Zeke had 184 carries this past year. Did he really? He did. I didn't think he had that much. He did. 
but like we talk about it, Christian McCaffrey is that league breaker. Mm -hmm. Like he's giving you 23, 24 points per game. I I don't expect that to change. So if you give me that for two years and I'm a contender and you're getting guys that you hope give you mid to, to back end wide receiver two production. Mm -hmm. And we always talk about it. If you're moving a 25 first in a deal involving somebody like Christian McCaffrey, it's probably going to be a late pick. Like, I don't hate paying that. Yeah. If if your roster is locked and loaded, I don't hate paying that for Chris McCaffrey. But it you said it. It's the perfect cash out. It is. If, it's if you're not contending such a good value. If you're not contending, this is the lotto ticket bailing you out. Mm-hmm. And you might say, JB, you're talking out of both sides of your mouth at your buddy because you just got done saying about Christian McCaffrey being a lead breaker. But now you're saying this is the perfect opportunity. It can be both. Yep. And yep. I really think this is a situation where if you have a team and you're like, oh, I could really acquire Christian McCaffrey, it's going to cost me Jordan Addison in a 25 first. I think that's too much for a 28 year old running back. It's not. The market, it, it's 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 higher than that. There are people willing to pay more. I I think it's a perfect trade. Perfect trade. And then uh West, uh, this the two wide receiver threes and a late first isn't much for CMC. Like if if you think he is the difference maker mm-hmm. that your team needs to put you over the edge, that's a perfect and trade. Is Chris McCaffrey where they get 0.24 rushing and receiving first downs? Who's going to have more receiving first downs this year? Zay Jones. Zay Jones. I did it. <laughs> Zay Flowers or Chris McCaffrey? I uh, probably Zay Flowers, but I mean, there's a chance where Chris McCaffrey could have the same amount of you know receiving first downs that Zay Flowers has. And 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 uh, and wait, there's more. I'm still not so certain that. Brent and Ayuk and Debo Samuel are on that week one roster for the 49ers. Oh, you're yeah, meh. Dude, I'm you know st- what I'm sick of? I'm absolutely sick of hearing about the Steelers being in on every single wide receiver. I'm like, just saying. I'm so, yeah. Yeah, I'm I can't feel say- it anymore. So you, you're sick of me. That's what you're saying. No, I'm sick of the Steelers and wide receivers. <laughs> like, even if a wide receiver goes there, I don't want them. No, but it, it certainly shakes up the the scene, if you will. In these other these other situations, yeah. Anyway, I think this is a perfect trade. Mm-hmm. It, it really is. Uh, it's the price to pay if you want to put your team over the edge for a Christian McCaffrey. Yep. So if you can do it for less, oh my gosh, the va- that's so much value. But you're adding peanuts together. You're you're trying to scrape two nickels to make a dime. Like that's give me McCaffrey if it makes sense for your team. All right, Mitch, twelve team super flex point five tight end premium, Tua. A 25 first and a 25 second for Lamar Jackson. Thor hammer Lamar, whatever oh. your hammer is for Lamar. So heavy on Lamar. I wish I could give this person credit, but I sent you a DM about fantasy points. It was posted on Twitter how much people got from rushing and how much people got from passing, right? Like Tua was 100% of his fantasy points came from passing. He was the only was guy wild. to do that. It's insane that, that yeah. he just gives you such little rushing upside. I thought he would be a little bit better with that in the NFL, but obviously he's not, but he has great guys to throw to. But I mean, this is Lamar positional upside every single week. Um, yeah, no hesitation on this one. Would you be willing, where do you draw the line when it comes to these picks? Because we kind of talked about it with Kyler last week. I I put my money where my mouth is. I made, I think I picked up five Kyler shares mm-hmm. at the expense of splitting up many of my two, uh, uh, my two roster ship percentage. But where do you draw the line at a 25, where that first, 25 first might be? Uh, so, I mean, if it's just the 25 first, it would have to be 106 or above. I mean, so but t- I'm so t- I'm saying I want that 25 second to be a 25 first. Uh, I mean, if we're talking truly random picks, I need more than one added to Tua to get me up to Lamar. So if it was Tua, 
105 and a 25 second, you'd be good with that? I'd be okay with that, yeah. yeah. And then once we get into like Tua and a playoff first, you need another playoff first. Yeah. But like I said, I'm not moving off these higher-end quarterbacks all that often, to be honest. Yeah, it's tough. I I have been going through so many leagues where, you know, the last couple episodes we've really focused on these packaging up ideas Mm. and it really took over the discord for a few days with some, uh, some good back and forth, but you go through trade baits and trade blocks, whether it's sleeper or MFL. And I'm trying to find people that want to shop higher end assets. It's tough. Yeah. It's it's tough to get anybody up anything good. It it is like like you might get the like okay I'm shopping Zay Flowers I'm shopping Jordan Addison I'm shopping Josh Jacobs, mm-hmm. but nobody is really putting those top eighteen guys on the block. And if they are, and you and you you try to make them an offer, either they don't reply, and you're like okay. Thanks. <laughs> or they they're just looking for more than I'm willing to pay. And again, I, I think it's a case where I'm coming in somewhat strong. Maybe they disagree. That, that you know, that's a different conversation. But I agree with you here. Assuming that is a mid to later first, just give me Lamar. I it, it's too much, too much upside. And and Lamar is one of the true you know, weapons in the NFL. Mm-hmm. Twelve team super flex start twelve. Ooh. Joe Mixon, Kyler Murray for Tua, a twenty five first and a twenty five second. Is this your trade, John? Uh no. Oh, it was a. It was, to be honest, it this was whenever the whole Kyler Tua conversation happened. I mm-hmm. can tell you right now, I'm smashing the Kyler side. Yeah. I mean, I am too. I think it does depend on how you think of Joe Mixon. If you think he's still a capable running back for Houston for this year and maybe next year, then I think you're heavily in favor of Mixon and Kyler, right? But if you're kind of pre-2023 season to where everyone was kind of out on Mixon in the first place and you're still there, I could see not doing it. I, I'm going to go Kyler and Mixon here because I do really, really like Mixon this year. Wes says this goes back to my previous comment. I'll definitely throw a top set on the top asset on the block just to see if someone will overpay. And most of the time you get garbage offers. I mean, uh, and then Lurs says, I love the guys that leave you on red when you send a trade. Well, oh, that drives me. That drives I mean, me. there's some, uh, that, that's you, that, said, that's man. you. And that, that drives me nuts because I'll send you an offer. You will DM me right away in our discord. Oh. And be like, like a, a GIF, like a, like a, whatever. Like a, what and the hell? And then is you that? make me go revoke the offer because I know yeah. you're not going to freaking. Uh, I mean, me. if you're going to waste my time making me read that stuff, <laughs> you guys can go and hit revoke. I'm okay with that. I don't know how we co manage any teams at this point. <laughs> it's because you take care of all the trades. <laughs> you, you've changed. I always say I you've changed. It's true. it's true. You're not the man. I chose to co-manage with. Okay? <laughs> That's very true. Twelve and teams say the same. I have. Yeah, I have. You haven't. Twelve changed. team super flex. C.J. Stroud and the two hundred two, or Garrett Wilson, the one hundred three, and the two ten. Oh man, it's. I'm going Garrett Wilson on this. I know C.J. Stroud is like the greatest rookie quarterback we've seen forever, right? That's at least what everyone assumes in Dynasty. You're getting the 103. And Garrett Wilson, who could be such a great fantasy contributor this year. 210, 202, whatever. Throw wins. That's great. Um, Yeah, I mean, I'm heavily on Garrett Wilson here. I know. I mean, we love C.J. Stroud. Um, everything he did at the end of last year moving forward. But we know he also doesn't give you much rushing upside at all. It's all through his arm. And he needs to be such an outlier passing-wise each and every year. And he has the fantasy pieces to do it. But that Garrett Wilson in one of three sides is just way too valuable for me. 
You're getting Garrett Wilson and Marvin Harrison Jr. You're getting Garrett yeah. Wilson, and I know uh, he's divisive, but Jaden Daniels, like mm-hmm. I, I want the Garrett Wilson side as well. Same. Yep. But again, that's the price of business if you want to get one of the hottest commodities in Dynasty Fantasy Football. And one of the reasons that I have very little C.J. Stroud, and we'll get to it here when we get to the positional pivots, like the, the C.J. Stroud market is absurd right now. Mm-hmm. Absurd. All right, so here is a package deal that it's on the lower side. It was with two yep. patrons, 14-team Superflex, 0.2 PPC, and there's some bonuses and things like that. But essentially, it's Jaden Reed for Kendra Miller, Wandale Robinson, and a 26 third. Yeah, it's and the third, you know, doesn't add a lot of value in two years. Wandale Robinson better not ever see my lineup. So it's Kendra Miller, Jaden Reed. And so it's Jaden Reed by a long shot. Like I want to see that 26 third pretty much be guaranteed. That's an early 26 second in order for me to make that move. So I'm Jaden Reed. Yeah, this was an easy one for me. I saw it go through. I'm in this league. Actually, again, it's not a, it's not a trade that like, hopefully in two years, you're like, this is on the back of your mind. It's been weighing on you because now Jaden Reed is a, a top six dynasty wide receiver. Yeah, I agree with you in a 14 team league. I want that 26 third to be early second. I was going to say early to mid second if it's a 12 team league. But for me, it was it was Jaden Reed going to the comments here. On that last trade, Wes says, if that one of three was Daniels, that's a smash for me. Greg says, same. Lur says, if it's not Daniels, it's a Marvin Harrison, and it's still a smash. And Greg says, also true. <laughs> so all from the last trade, but still, I, you know, I'd be interested to see if anybody would take the Stroud side there. All right, so now we are getting into, that was kind of the packaging up deal or splitting up into multiple assets. This one, we have six trades, positional pivots, a small tier down, and this kind of, it, it, it all ties in together, right? Mm -hmm. When we talk about those trades from last week where, and even these package deals where you're looking at guys that are really giving you something over replacement. Once you start to get players within the same tier, what can I get on top of one of them to move the other? And we've been talking about this for several years now. Can I, can I position myself? Can I, can I move around maneuver within a tier that is exactly what a lot of this is going to be here so first trade 12 team super flex start 11 josh jacobs in a 25 fourth for deandre swift in a 25 second even though i have his jersey right behind my head still it's josh jacobs i know yeah it's josh jacobs for me i know people are worried about like him somewhat not being completely healthy Josh Jacobs can be a top three running back this year. DeAndre Swift has a zero chance of being anywhere near the top 10, unless it's just because he plays all the weeks of the season and he just slowly accumulates those points. I don't want to start DeAndre Swift on any of my teams. And I'm heavily Josh Jacobs here. I love the DeAndre Swift side. Absolutely not. You're crazy. But again, this is where... Like you are, and I, please correct me if I'm wrong. And this isn't. Like oh, a, I will. Don't worry. Just no, no. But it's not. It's a sincere <laughs> comment. It's not. It's not a jab or anything. Mm-hmm. But you are, I would say, more in line to. I I want this guy over player B, and a small pivot for a little bit of value isn't going to get me there, right? Yeah. No. no like I'm heavily. I'm not, hey, this value is close if I add this. I'm more, I think Josh Jacobs is good this year, so to get him off my roster, it's going to have to be a lot, right? But if you change a Josh Jacobs to like a more mid running back that I don't have a lot of faith does have that upside this year, then yeah, then I could see myself pivoting off for Swift and a second. But I think Josh Jacobs is going to smash so hard this year. If what if what if it was Kenneth Walker? 
I, I love you. You can't ask me about Kenneth Walker, one of the greatest running backs to ever play in the NFL. Isaiah Pacheco. Oh, he's gone. I, Pacheco is, yeah, he's off my team 20 minutes ago. Rashad White? White, I would probably do the same. I would move him. Yep. James Cook? J- yeah, I'd probably move him as well. Okay. So we're, but we're it's, really not that tier. Yeah. That you and I, like, we're uh, one tier apart mm-hmm. of how we would make that move there. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I am willing to do it with Walker and Jacobs. No. You're willing to do it with the tier below. Yeah. Think, you know, yeah. Rashad White, James Cook. I'm removing rookies from the conversation. Good. But with, with Jonathan Brooks. Yeah, I would no. Brooks is the rookie who could be the best running back in this class. So I would I would want Brooks there. Okay. And does this change at all for you if instead of Swift it's Montgomery? Montgomery in a second. No, I'm still going Jacobs. Mixon? Jacobs. Stevenson? Jacobs. Heavy Jacobs. Yep. Derrick Henry? No, I I take Derrick Henry in a second. Oh no, yeah. it's Derrick Henry for Swift in a second, right? No, no, no. no. So, well then, Sorry. the, the I, last I minute of our there. lives is meaningless. <laughs> no, Jacobs four. Oh, Montgomery would, in a second, Mixon yeah. in a second. I would take Jacobs over all those. And when it gets to Henry, I'm taking Henry because I think Henry has the same upside. Okay. All right. Wes says Jacobs also has the biggest bust potential. Injuries, new team, getting older, new team, <laughs> spent good capital, another running back. I the, and it's not anti Jacobs. Like it's no, just I, the I way I, you know, I like to play in those margins. You do. I like to get doubt. my hands dirty, Mitch. Do you love the pivot? Which actually, the I, pivots are, are your thing. I mean, the pivot point, but fun story, and not maybe not fun. Like just me being. Uh, I don't like to get my hands dirty. If if you and I ever went, maybe we'll do it in Canton. We'll go get some wings or something. I'm one of those people. Like I'll eat a wing, and then I clean my hands off. Because like then I'm 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 taking a sip of a drink. I don't want to get sauce everywhere. Okay. Maybe I'm on my phone answering somebody in the Discord. So your hands always got to be clean. So you know truly, while you're I, while you're sitting there drinking your water vodka, I get it. You don't want to get the buffalo ranch in there i get it that's fine you can make fun of me all you want but i'm gonna be pounding those vodka waters not soda water either just water just straight water you get you get a little lemon you splash it in there (laughs) two months away man it's gonna be a great time it's gonna be a lot of fun all right me and my clean hands 12 team super flex start 12 plus mm-hmm. 0.75 for a tight end premium. A-chan and 210 or Gibbs. And for additional context, the 210 was then moved for David Montgomery. So we can kind of look at it from, from both. I want to have a talk. If this was a patron that was trading away Gibbs for A-chan, I want to have a talk with them. I want to sit them down and be like, look, uh, I mean, you're you're in the Discord. You're a patron. I want to know how this could possibly happen to where you would move off of a Gibbs for a Devin H. Uh, just no one is like one of the best rookie running backs ever. And the other one was like a great rookie running back for two games this year, which was amazing. But I mean, Gibbs was doing it in the NFC championship game. H A was hurt for half the year. It's, I'm sorry, man. I am so heavily on Gibbs, and I hope this isn't just my line fandom, because if I would switch this out and say this was for Brees Hall, I would have the exact same thing. Like, Brees Hall, Bijan, whoever. I truly believe they're giving you so much positional upside year over year over a Devin A-chain that this trade, like, this is one I would let sit, right? But this was accepted, so maybe I'm just really off on this. But I get this. I'd be like, no, I'm good. <sighs> with the secondary move of 210 for Montgomery in a start 12, I don't think it's crazy. A Chan and Montgomery forgives. 
in a start 12, that, I'm not doing it. No. But I, I, I like Gibbs as well. I want Gibbs here. But I think you are being a little, I don't want to nope. say overly critical, but overly critical. No, that's right. This is pivot point. We're allowed to say stuff like this. Absolutely not. It's all right. I'll get a DM and I'll probably get a, hey, you actually voted for the A-chain side of this. I mean, I, maybe I did. <laughs> oh, son of a bitch. I did, didn't I? Yeah. Uh, I have so many of those. I'm like, oh, like I'm smashing my homes here. And some people respond right away. You voted for B. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't, dyslexia i don't know like I, that's this I, whole, I, I meant a i'm these like, past two episodes that's how i'm gonna feel because i know all of these were probably posted i probably voted on them and i probably said the other side but that's what we do you know we change our views these weren't posted as polls though they were just that's i think good. after the fact good um so 12 team super flex this i this was lurs <laughs> roma dunze or jsn in a 25 second well let me ask you is this one close for you Close from a current day value perspective, yes. So for me, value fine. JSN would have been the fifth or sixth best wide receiver in this class. Probably five. I, I can. Yeah, and Adunze. I know if you change where he landed, he could have been even higher than where he is. I think mm -hmm. Adunze is just so much of a better talent than JSN is. That twenty-five second. If it's purely random, could be late, could be early. I'm going to Dunze really, really easily on this. I just think, like, I think JSN can be a very good receiver. Mm -hmm. I think Roma Dunze could be a top tier talent. Yes. And I, I, both of, like, th this is a trade that in a year, both JSN and Roma Dunze, their value is even lower mm -hmm. because uh, there's but a lot of comparisons being drawn with. Uh, coming into kind of a crowd situation, whereas one you had Geno Smith, one you have Caleb Williams, a rookie, but a top tier prospect. I just, I, I think Roma Dunze for me, the ceiling is far higher. Like JSN is, uh, you can quote me, JSN's never going to be a top 12 dynasty receiver. No. From this point on, he's not. Yeah. Roma Dunze, I mean, he's, he's not far off right now for a lot of people. <laughs> he's pretty close already. And, there's a lot of uh, skepticism there for him. Uh, Ron says, I keep forgetting JSN exists. Wes says, that's a Rome smash. Uh, yeah, I, I just, I like the Adunze side. And it's not so much a JSN knock, just more optimism around Rome Adunze. Yes. 12 team super flex, additional point for tight ends. I thought this was an interesting one. Maybe it's not, but let's see what Mitch thinks. Trey McBride in a 25 second for Kirk Cousins and Mark Andrews. I don't mind the Cousins and Andrews side here, to be honest. Like, I'm very high on McBride. I mean, I wasn't to begin with. You've more than talked me into him. His play on the field has been amazing. Cousins is probably a top 12 quarterback this year if he stays healthy. Andrews is a top five tight end, top one potential if he stays healthy. I mean, I think there's a decent chance that Andrews can outscore McBride this year. You're getting Cousins on top of that. So, yeah, I'm going to go Andrews and Cousins. The quarterback market in the league comes into play here. Yes. And this is a conversation we had with Cows during a discussion in a two-quarterback league. And I said, what high-end quarterbacks, not to say like this is not separate from this Kirk Cousins poll, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but – what high-end quarterbacks have actually moved in the last six months where a quarterback didn't come back and return? What about the 23 season? And the answer was essentially, it doesn't happen in that league. So that comes into play here too. If it's a really tight quarterback market, even with it being a super flex league and not a true two quarterback league, that is going to be critical for me. So if, if I'm set at quarterback, Let's say I have the luxury of having three really solid quarterbacks mm -hmm. and Kirk Cousins. It, I would take the McBride side just for the upside because of that specific situation. If it's a tight quarterback market and I, I need Cousins, it's the Cousins and Andrew side. Yeah. Like, let's say, not to pick on it, but let's say you have a Russell Wilson, right? And that is your quarterback two, quarterback three. 
then I see the cousin side like really heavily being there. And that was Wes tanking and trying to get cousins off my roster. I could be a really awkward family reunion getting rid of all your cousins, but mm. oh boy. Oh boy, tough crowd. 12 team super flex. I, I was reading the chat, man. <laughs> no, 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 it's fine. It's, I, anytime I'm like, okay, this is gold. Yeah. I look at Mitch's face. And when there's no reaction, I'm like, back to the drawing board. <laughs> it's 12, to the team super, 12 team super flex. Plus six, minus two quarterback scoring. Stroud or Lamar Jackson in the 25 seconds. I, are we really here? Is this where yes. we are? Yes. Like for me, Lamar is already over Stroud. So I'm getting a second with it. I know that might not be everyone else's value out there. But it's Lamar, and it's like, thanks, cool. I'd even kick back a third if I had to get that trade done. If you are more of a portfolio manager mm -hmm. and you have the luxury of having multiple shares of CJ Stroud, I would look to be shopping him yep. because the market is wild right now. If you're in one or two leagues and you have one share of CJ Stroud, I get it. Mm hmm Hey, I, I want a share of CJ Stroud. You know, I'm in a startup. Maybe there's a player I don't have, and I'm like, screw it. I'm, I'm a, I want one share of this guy. Mm -hmm. I absolutely get it. But if you have multiple leagues and you have the luxury of having multiple shares of CJ Stroud, you better be shopping him. All right, Mitch. 12 team super flex. This is the final trade here. 12 team super flex. 0.5 tight end premium, start 11, Najee Harris and Malik Neighbors for Ramondre Stevenson, Ricky Parasol, and a 25 first. I appreciate that I'm getting Najee for 80% discount because I'm so heavy on Malik Neighbors here. Uh, Malik Neighbors, I mean, we just said, you know, CD Lamb got 160 targets last year. If Malik Neighbors stays healthy, he's getting 150, 160, easy. I mean, Stevenson, who knows with that backfield, Pearsall, if we don't see any of those 49ers wide receivers moved, he's not going to really see the field. Yes, the 25 first is added in, but Malik Neighbors is an amazing prospect, one of the best ones to come out in the last four to five years. So even that's an earlier 25 first, there's still a chance Malik Neighbors is better than that prospect coming out. So I, Malik Neighbors, and I'm getting Najee added on. We've had a lot of Najee today. I know, and this is an easy one for me. Stevenson and Najee, like straight up, I prefer Stevenson. Mm. I think that you're getting probably 90 to 95% of production though. And it's not like a situation where one, is it more risk of losing value than the other? I mean, they're both on the last year of the deal. Yeah. Ramondre says, I think we're close to an extension here in new England, but you're getting a potential. I mean, you're getting a probable stud in Malik neighbors for Ricky parcel, who might not even see the fricking field this year and a, a 25 first. I would go as far to say, even if that 25 first is one Oh four, 105 next year, I'm still doing this. Yeah, that's give, my thinking too. Give me Malik Neighbors. I, I I think there was an opportunity to get a lot more here or reframe the trade itself if acquiring the Ramondre Stevenson side. Yep. Final thoughts. We didn't do it on the weekly show. I just remember the final yeah, thought. You were just going. It's all right. It's all good. Well, we listen, I said, but an hour and a half for both episodes. We're here at 10 30 AM Eastern time, Mitch. I believe this weekly episode was two forty nine. So Ooh. for the 249th time, what do you got for our listeners? Final thoughts. Hey, I just want everyone to know that these were, as we've said, they were taking off the discord. If you enjoy shows like this and you want to see more, just let us know, join the discord. It's free. Um, please post in the YouTube comments that you like this kind of content. If you do, we'll do a lot more of these because I think they're fun. I think they're thought provoking, but I just want to thank all the patrons and everyone in the discord that gave us all of these trades that give us this content each week. So I just want to say thank you to them. 
absolutely. I always say the patrons and the viewers, everybody, they make it more enjoyable for us because, because otherwise it would just be you, me and Dan sitting here. I talking about how often we wash our hands and things like that. So and nobody wants to hear that for Mitch Sorensen, Dan LaMagna. I'm John Bauer. We'll catch everybody next week. Have a great day.